Mr. Meredith, would you tell the court what Luckhurst said to you while you were both on remand awaiting trial? Oh, well, we got chatting about all this bombing, didn't we? Were you sharing a cell? No, no, this was in the exercise period, dinner time and that. What kind of conversations did you have together? Well, we was mates. I mean, uh, he used to give me a snack. This bird who came to see him brought it. She got bail. That one. You talked to the bomb attacks in the news? Yeah. Well, I didn't know much about it, but uh, Trev used to fill me in on it. Uh, political stuff and things. Who was planting them, the bombs and that? Did he refer to the bomb placed in the IWS building? Yeah. What did he say about it? He said he put it there. Did he say why he put it there? Oh, something about him being fascist or something. Saying that people ought to be lied over. The... I didn't get half of it. But Luckhurst told you he was responsible for placing the bomb which destroyed part of the IWS building? Yeah. He said he watched it go off. You and Trev were mates, were you? Yeah. For long? Yeah. How long? About three months. Four went down. What is your present address? Brixton Prison. <laughs> so, Trev provided you with cigarettes that Miss Sawyer used to bring to the prison. Well, he didn't smoke, did he? Well, presumably he got Miss Sawyer to bring them for you especially. Oh, I reckon. In addition to this, he used to help you understand the news. Yeah. And you knew him as Trev. Yeah. So here is your mate, Trev, who went to a great deal of trouble to get cigarettes for you, helped you understand what was going on in the world, someone who you spent a great deal of time with when you were out of the cells. And you repay all this friendship by offering to appear as a prosecution witness against him. Well, my public duty, wasn't it? You have been convicted, have you not, of shoplifting, petty larceny, assault on the police, housebreaking, and being in possession of an offensive weapon. Yeah. On each of these occasions, you pleaded not guilty. Yeah. On each of these occasions, you went into the witness box, took the oath, and denied the charges. Yeah. On each of these occasions, you were disbelieved by the jury. Yeah. In fact, on each of these occasions, you were a wholly untruthful witness. Are you really asking the jury to believe you now? You are giving this false evidence, are you not? In order to earn some remission from your five-year sentence. Lord, uh, I have no questions. And Happen, Lord, is the case for the prosecution. Please, Lord. The assistance of my learned friend, Miss Tate, I will seek to call the evidence for the defense. First, the defendant himself, Mr. Trevor Luckhurst. What is your religion, please? CV. Right, <coughs> look in your right hand, read. <coughs> I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. You are Trevor John Luckhurst. You're 27 years of age, and you live at 68 Brownlow Gardens, Fulchester. Except for the six months I've been rotting in prison, waiting for them to get round to trying me, yes. Please answer... Please answer the questions put to you. I was. Mr. Luckhurst, you are being examined by your own counsel. I should have thought the least you could do would be to extend to him your cooperation. Am I right? Yes. Your occupation is a freelance journalist? Yes. I would like you to cast your mind back to the evening of March 10th of this year. Right. And would you tell the court of your activities between 6 and 8 o'clock on the evening of that date? I was with Jill. Miss Sawyer. We were at a friend's flat from three o'clock in the afternoon till about half past eight at night. Did you leave the flat at all for any length of time? No. Where is this flat? Bromfield Road. And how far is that from the IWS building? About ten miles. Could you and Miss Sawyer possibly have been at the IWS premises at seven o'clock that evening? No. 
Could you possibly have placed the bomb which exploded on those premises? Impossible. Have you ever been to the premises of the IWS? Yes. Would you tell the court when? I've been on picket duty there three or four times. Please explain what you mean by picket duty. I'm opposed to the opinions published in the IWS periodical, so-called common sense. Me and a few friends have been down there demonstrating. Mr. Luckhurst, this is important. Have any of these demonstrations ever used violence as a tactic? No, never. Have you met the night watchman, Mr. Bell? Yes, once. How did that come about? We were standing outside the main gates once, and he came out waving a stick at us. What happened? I tried to talk him out of hitting anyone with it. Did he hit anyone with it? No, he was all wind. You talked him out of it? Jill did more than I did. Miss Sawyer was with you at that time? Yeah. So the two of you made yourself known to Mr. Bell during that peaceful demonstration? Yes. After calming down, what did Mr. Bell do? After calling me a communist and Jill a slut, he went back inside. Now, the police have found a pair of plimsolls in your house, embedded with fragments of glass, which a forensic test suggests came from the IWS building after the bomb blast. So they say. What does that answer mean? It means I wasn't there in the forensic lab, was I? Well, they could have planted all sorts of evidence on my things without me knowing. Did those plimsolls belong to you? <coughs> no. The pieces of alarm clock found in your house, did they belong to you? No. They were on your property. Yeah, I know that. Then who did they belong to? No comment. You know you may be doing yourself great harm in the eyes of the jury by answering no comment. I'll take that chance. Did these items belong to Miss Sawyer? Don't be bloody soft. The plimsolls are size 10. <laughs> You're aware, as his lordship's pointed out, you're harming your own case by covering up for these other people. Maybe. There's no maybe about it. You're also gravely affecting Miss Sawyer's case. Don't fall for that one, Trev. Miss Sawyer, if you cannot remain quiet, I will have you removed from the court. Referring to the letters produced by the prosecution, the two mentioned were written by you to Miss Sawyer while she was attending Oxford University? Yeah. You say in one, pity someone doesn't close them down, that is IWS with a bomb, and in the other, something must be done about them. Right. When you wrote these lines, were you actively planning to do something about IWS yourself? No. Mr. Luckhurst, were you planning to bomb them? Of course not. What were you planning to do? I'm a journalist. I, I know the law. I also know the old thing about never writing anything to a woman you don't want that out in court. I thought that applied to other matters. I repeat, what were you planning to do? Nothing. Carry on waving banners, I suppose. Pretty futile stuff. Thank you. Please remain there. Waving banners is pretty futile, isn't it? Yes, sometimes. Futile because it doesn't get any quick or dramatic results. If you like. Not nearly so quick or dramatic as using a bomb, for instance. Very smart. I do not intend to keep reminding you to answer the questions put to you. Do not embellish them. And why don't you tell him that? Your first letter to Miss Sawyer speaks of closing down IWS with a bomb. So what? Your second letter talks of something needing to be done. Yeah. Two months after the date on that second letter, a bomb does go off at IWS. Clockwork pieces used to make homemade bombs are found in your house. A pair of plimsolls containing splinters of glass from the scene of the crime is also discovered. Size 10, your size. And you and Miss Sawyer are both picked out of an identification parade by the night watchman. You have done your homework, haven't you? Your explanation of this, as I understand it, is that the clockwork pieces in the plimsolls belong to someone else whom you decline to identify. That in itself is enough to satisfy the conspiracy charge. My lord, my learned friend is directing the jury as to what they should find. You say that the letters are not to be taken literally because you intended to continue with your futile course of non-violent opposition. My lord, I protest. You will ignore the prosecution's last few words. You know better than that, Mr. Fry. I beg your pardon, Lord. You were joking when you talked of closing down IWS with a bomb. No. You were not joking. No, I was not joking. At the same time, I didn't mean that I'd do it. There seems to be some confusion as to the ownership of these plimsolls. Not to me, there isn't. At least to me. And you must be pretty thick. 
If I hear any more impertinence from your witness, Mr. Elliot, I will adjourn the court. Mr. Luckhurst, please answer the question and don't lose your temper. I didn't ask a question. I didn't have a chance to, but I shall ask one now. You made a slanderous remark just now about the police planting evidence upon your property in the forensic lab. What do you mean? Nothing. You said your things, your plimsolls. Look, are you deaf? I told you they're not mine! What you said when your counsel was questioning you about the splinters of glass embedded in the plimsolls, they could have planted all sorts of evidence on my things without me knowing. Do you still say they don't belong to you? They don't belong to me. Oh, you've changed your mind as to their ownership. Look, all right, you, you can make anyone look an idiot in court. You've had the practice. You know what I mean, everyone else does. I meant they could have planted things in my property if they wanted to, into anyone's property. I didn't mean to say those plimsolls are mine, they're not. I'm not going to tell you who you use they are because I know they didn't do it either. All right, you want to do someone, do me, I don't care, it's all a bloody frame up anyway. Go ahead and set me down. But I tell you what, from now on I refuse to recognise the jurisdiction of this kangaroo court any longer. You can all go and get stuffed. <laughs> well, do you intend to answer any further questions? You do not. Mr. Luckhurst, think again. Mr. Fry, if you have any more questions, put them to him. Who do the plimsolls belong to if they do not belong to you? They're your plimsolls, aren't they, Mr. Luckhurst? And you were wearing them on the night of March the 10th. Mr. Luckhurst, this is your last opportunity to answer those questions. If you do not, I shall enter in my note that you refuse to answer them. Very well. It's court is a farce. It's a push-up job from start yes. to finish. What do you want us to say, that we're guilty? Yes. All right, we are. We planted that bomb. We want it to go off. We do it again. We do it again tomorrow. Yes. Is that what you want? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. The case of the Queen versus Luckhurst and Sawyer continues tomorrow in the Crown Court.